How's it going, guys? Uh, Darren Schultes, Ty Jacobs here with Hit Streak. Uh, today we're gonna, you know, ask, interview Ty and ask him a few questions about coaching and Hit Streak. Um, so the first one, Ty, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I grew up in Colorado. Um, both my families, my mom and my dad's side, were both from Colorado. Uh, both sides of the family very passionate about baseball and, and sports in general. Um, my mom's dad played at OU. My dad played in college um, and a little bit afterwards as well, so definitely runs from both sides. Um, I went to Cherokee Trail High School, um, grew up playing four sports, as in, and as I got older, kind of my later high school years just really gravitated more towards baseball, which I always knew baseball was my best sport, but didn't want to quite give up on the other ones too early. Um, ended up playing college baseball, um, played infield and pitched in college. Um, went to three different schools, so I played at the Division One, Division Two, and the JUCO level, which um, helps today as I'm working with young kids just because I know where you're going. I know where you've been. I know where you're going. I know what it takes to play at all of those different levels and and was fortunate to do that. You know, when I was going through it, it felt like kind of a whirlwind and a ride changing schools every year or two. But um, now I look back on it more as a blessing because now I get to speak into the kids that I work with a lot more with, with direct knowledge, I guess, and got to play for four coaches in four years, which was cool. I got to learn a little bit from each of them and take pieces that have helped mold me into the coach I am today. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Colorado. Now I'm married to a beautiful wife. I have two amazing girls, um, Sawyer and Harper. Sawyer's four, Harper's two. Um, they spend a lot of their free time at the ball field, but um, yeah. Cool. Well, before we move on, why don't we, uh, those schools, Ty, uh, kind of let everyone know you started off in Cherokee Trail, ended up at UNC, right, at, at a high school. And then, yeah, so absolutely. Tell um, them kind of how, how that path worked for you. Perfect. Um, so I was supposed to go to Grandview, actually, and some kids that I grew up playing with and against were going to, to Cherokee Trail, and they had a good baseball program, so I decided to, to go to CT. Um, while I was at CT, I um, was an All-State infielder, an All-State outfielder, and the Colorado Pitcher of the Year one year. Um, ended up going to UNC out of high school, um, played infield and pitched at UNC. Um, got to play a lot my freshman year, and it was fun playing Division I. We played a really tough schedule, got to go all around the country, play some, some of the top teams in the country that you grow up watching on TV and different stuff. It was a really cool experience. but. Um, wasn't quite the right fit for me, so I, I tried to go to KU my sophomore year, um, and my transfer request got denied, so I had to go to JUCO for a year, and it was actually one of the best years of my life. I wish I went to Seward County in Kansas, and I wish it would have been a four-year school, to be honest. I got so much better in that one year of JUCO, and so much stronger, and just grew so much as a person, and ended up tearing my knee at JUCO, and came back to Metro, where I had a lot of guys that I had played with and being from Denver, um, had some opportunities elsewhere, but decided ultimately Metro was the best fit and ended up playing my last two years at Metro and got to play one with you yeah. at the same time. So it's fun getting to, to reunite. So, yeah, no, yep. definitely, definitely. All right, uh, how did you come to Hit Streak and uh, what is your role here? Um. So kind of an interesting story. Um, I graduated from Metro with a marketing degree and I love to hunt and fish as well. So um, got an internship with the World Fishing Network here in Denver. Um, they're a 24 seven TV channel that just shows fishing all the time. And we ended up um, buying the outdoor channel and the sportsman channel while I was there. So I was the marketing manager of all three of those for a bit. and. And it was really fun and I thought I was gonna do that the rest of my life and I just kept feeling a tug at my heart like God wanted me to go back to baseball. And that was my biggest passion forever. And if you had asked me when I was 21, what are you gonna do when you grow up? I would have still told you to play baseball, you know? And God had other plans and for a while I struggled with that. I didn't know why 
I didn't keep playing baseball and why I didn't get more opportunity to keep doing that. I got to go play overseas for a little bit and, and it was very fun. But um, I guess growing up, I always thought it was going to be more than that. And um, I felt God tugging at my heartstrings to come back and, and do baseball. And um, a coach that I grew up playing for when I was young was the JV coach at Rock Canyon High School. Um, and he called me one day and said the coach just left and it was him and 86 kids for the fall and he needed some help. So he called and asked if I'd help him. And so I started going over there every afternoon for a few weeks until they hired somebody. And then they hired a guy and he wanted to keep me on a staff, but in my current life situation, that wasn't necessarily gonna be possible. I had to be behind a desk 40, 50 hours a week and I kept praying about it and I felt like God was telling me to go do it. And I was a little timid because how are my bills going to get paid? How's everything, how's, how am I going to pay my rent and everything else, you know? Yeah. And the baseball coaches, we don't do it for the money and you don't make enough to cover basic bills yeah. even, you know? So, um, I prayed about it, prayed about it. I asked God to make it so clear to me. I couldn't say no and went to church that weekend and they were preaching on Matthew 6 and one of the main verses is the birds don't sew up and reap for the next season God always provides their meals for them and they they don't worry about where their next meal is coming from and I asked him for clarity and feel like I got it so I went in the next day put in my two-week notice and my boss asked me what I was going to do, and I said, I don't know. But um, I actually got online. I started folding towels at a gym um, and found an ad that Scott had posted for Hit Streak and came in and met with him and started just doing some instruction on the side and then gradually worked into working some front desk. Um, and then at our old facility, we had a smaller facility before this one, and I got to the point that I was kind of running our day to day operations at Hit Streak. And then when we moved to our our nice new building um, kind of transitioned into taking over the baseball team. So we never had youth teams. We did in the back in the day, but not at our last facility. And when we moved here, that was going to be something that we decided to implement. So I kind of took on that role at cool. Hit Streak now. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are some things about Hit Streak you think most people don't know about? Um. I think the main thing that I hear all the time is people think we're a, a new organization when in reality we've been around for 18 years now so um, definitely not a new organization we've been doing it for almost two decades and at one point had um, almost 20 baseball teams from the youth to high school levels Connie Mack levels and and then another dozen softball teams. We even had two separate facilities, a baseball and a softball facility. Um, and then when we downsized into our last place, we kind of got rid of all that. And I think as a, I guess as a tragedy to doing that, people, we kind of fell to the wayside and our name wasn't out there on the fields every weekend. And, and our brand recognition kind of went to the wayside. But I think now that we're ramping it up again we have teams the bigger facility i think people are starting to know about us a lot more but um i think that's the biggest thing just how long we've been around and how long we've been at it so uh, what makes hit streak baseball teams different from other teams that's a good question um and i want to preface it by saying i think there's a lot of really good baseball clubs out there i think there's a lot of good baseball people involved in all the clubs out there, I really do. So, um, but my main goal when we were restarting teams, I guess me and Scott, we were, we talked about, we wanted to do something just different than other people are doing. Um, and part of that being different is we saw a lot of kids and teams around, they're very skilled today. I think kids are more skilled than we were yeah. when we grew up playing, yeah. um, but I think they've lost the art of playing team baseball. And I think the respect and the character has gone downhill on the ball field, if I'm being honest. You hear a lot more chirping and getting on umpires and parents and kids, and it seems to have gotten a little out of control. So when, when we started teams, I really wanted it to be different. Um, so 
we build in character training um, and leadership training to all of our kids where I think that's just a really important aspect where at the end of the day all these kids are going to be done playing baseball at some point and hopefully they're blessed enough to get to play into college and on but for a lot of kids they might not even make their high school team or might not go to college and then what type of person are you that's that's really what matters in life what kind of son are you what kind of friend are you what kind of husband are you going to be and i'm passionate about developing young men obviously i want them to be good baseball players i love the game of baseball and and that's our job is to develop them on the baseball field but i think taking that a step further and really developing the person at the same time as the baseball player is really important and we're, we're never going to be an organization that has 50 teams out there. We keep it small by design. Um, we have eight baseball teams and eight softball teams, and that's all we're ever going to have. I want to be able to know the families and know the kids when they come in here. And if a kid has an issue, to be able just to walk up and talk to me like I'm his friend, not just he's not another number that's coming through here. I want it just to be personal. So I like that. Yep. I like that. So that kind of – Leads me to my next question, Ty. Why why do you coach? Yeah, um, I feel like I've been blessed to be able to. I have kind of a unique perspective, I guess, where there's not a lot of people that played college baseball that were all state outfielders, infielders, and pitchers. Where I kind of have a view on the whole field. I know what every person's job is on any given play. Yeah. I've been there. I've done that. I can speak to it from experience, not just from something watching. I read in a book or yeah. from watching, right? Where I think that experience has helped a lot where I can speak into things. Um, obviously, I've been teaching hitting for almost 10 years now where, and I still learn new things every single day where I think that's important as a coach is to never stop learning and not think that you know it all either. There's always something that I can learn to get better that I can pass on to a kid. Um, and really developing young men, right? Where I think in society today, there's a, there's a lack of that, whether it's no two parents in the household, whether it's society, social media, whatever. But I think men really need good role models to point to and and I hope to be that for my players and obviously not there yet but I try every day to try to provide a good example for our kids and and try to just create good young men um, and that's something that I've been become passionate about where I was really passionate about playing the game and for a while I didn't know where to go necessarily and now I've learned as I've gotten older that it's really important to pass that on to that next group and just to see the light bulb go off in the kid's eyes and to see him get it and to see him work so hard to achieve something and then get to do it yeah. is just so rewarding and I play such a small part of that where it's the kids work ethic and their drive and their passion but to be able to to guide them and have them channel it the right way and to see it pay off is is rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so last one, Ty. Um, what are some of the main differences in coaching Rock Canyon versus Hit Streak and how they tie into each other, they're different? Um, kind of explain that to everyone, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, it's the same game, right, at the end of the day. Um, and a lot of the drills that we do with our high school kids and different people are the same drills that I'm doing with the young kids here at Hit Streak too, right? Where we're not reinventing the wheel and getting good at baseball is kind of boring if you, if we're being honest. It's just repeating the same simple movements over and over and over and over again until you don't have to think about it. And whether that's a nine-year-old or an 18-year-old, those principles hold the same, where I think the fundamentals are really what separates them the people who are the best at fundamentals excel the people who are shaky on their fundamentals have trouble right in our game so i think from that standpoint it's pretty similar where high school level it's more fine tuning most of the time by the time a kid gets to the varsity level and in our league they're a pretty good baseball player they have a lot of the big skills worked out already they can throw they can run they can field etc but just really 
fine tuning it and there's a difference in doing it the right way over and over again and not and I think at the high school level it's more fine tuning and I think it's more psychology at that point where it's getting them in the right head space and into the right place where they can perform the best and that might be different from kid to kid and, and team to team but I would say the psychology and the mental aspects a lot different at the high school level than it is at the youth level um, and it's a little more cutthroat where we have to play our best nine every single day on the field and it doesn't matter if I have a kid that I absolutely love that works his butt off if he's not good enough to make the field he's got to sit the bench and and that sucks as a coach to be able to do because there's kids like that every year right where at the youth level it's more the games aren't quite as important where yeah we're still trying to win you shouldn't do anything if you're not trying to be the best at it and you're not trying to win don't don't waste your time doing it by any means but it's more about developing and getting the kids ready for that next step and I personally love doing both because at the high school side if I'm being honest there's days it feels like a job it really does and there's more pressure and you have to get them to perform yeah. and and at the youth level obviously we're trying to get them to perform but it's a little more lighthearted where the kids are still kids at the end of the day yeah. and they're dancing and giggling and laughing and and just yeah. to find those that fun in the game yeah. anymore where the more serious a baseball you play the less fun it can become it should still be a game at the end of the day right I always say you should train like your life depends on it and when you play a game you got to be loose and free yeah. right where I think that's hard for some people to separate but for kids it's just lighthearted and bubbly and fun when you're around them and and it makes me enjoy it and and gives me that perspective yeah. to really enjoy the game more okay well yeah. now everyone that's Ty Jacobs um, he's director of baseball general manager here at Hit Streak. Uh, thanks for listening in thanks for having me <laughs>